you've probably noticed that when you see an electric scooter on the street, maybe half of them say Go Tracks on the stem because they're one of the best selling electric scooter brands for adults. But you may not know that when you see a GoTrax, it's probably a GXL V2 because for years it's been the most affordable and best selling budget electric scooter GoTrax makes and a favorite for new riders. But that's all about to change because we just tested something we like even better. This is the 2023 GoTrax G3 Plus. A scooter that combines features from the best of GoTrax's budget electric scooters in one vehicle that gets the basics right, but leaves the bells and whistles for pricier models. Appropriately, it has a lot of pluses versus the GXL V2, like an impressive top speed, great hill climbing ability, and a smoother ride. In this review, we're gonna show you the data for how it beats the GXL, but more importantly, tell you why the ride quality and top speed got better. Something else you may not know about GoTrax is they're headquartered here in the United States. So the G3 Plus was designed in Madison, Wisconsin. Go Radicals. The extra performance and ride quality of the G3 Plus come at a cost though. The GXL V2 was impossibly cheap at $299 to $350. We, we actually don't know how they did that. But at a list price of $399, the G3 Plus is still one of the best deals you'll find on an affordable scooter from a named brand, which is why it's on our list of best cheap scooters of 2023. Ride quality is improved in four ways versus the GXL V2. The tire diameter is increased from eight and a half inches to 10 inches for a more comfortable ride and more traction from the inner tube style air filled tires. Next, you get 300 watts of power up from 250. And the frame is also much stronger and just feels more solid. And finally, there's just a lot more room for the rider. The GXL V2 felt small with short handlebars and a short deck. The G3 Plus on the other hand is more than two inches taller and the deck itself is about two and a half inches longer. So your feet don't feel like they're stuck in one position all the time. In fact, it's even longer than the deck of the famous GoTrax G4. Here's my take on build quality from my first day of testing. So the display is pretty good. I can read it pretty clearly in sunlight, which is really you know the number one thing with a display it's just got two modes which i like actually three is too much we, who needs 7 11 and 15 you know here we have what 15 and 18 that's enough simple little bell um the brakes are you know a little mushy but they actually work really well for a beginner i think these are going to be great and the regen kicks in the only thing that catches my eye right now that may not be able to see it but there's there's definitely some wobble in this stem it doesn't have big brakes so you're not putting big loads on the front so honestly when i'm riding it i don't feel that i'm really nitpicking to pick on the, the stem wobble i love this nice big rubber plug on the charging port it's super soft and it pops in there really easily. Normally you put a small like rubber thing in there, it's just really hard to use. This is really easy, I would actually use this. Typical side stand, you know, very typical brake, disc brake in the rear, nice big uh, 10 inch tires. They feel great. Does it have a brake light? Yes, it does. You know, at this price point, you don't always expect a brake light and this has it. Front, oh, I haven't even peeled off the headlight cover. Let's get a look at that. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. That's kind of cool. One click is changing gears. So there we go. So two clicks, it's gotta be headlight. So there it is, looks nice. Nice accents up and down. Little indicator right here showing it's on. I'm not thrilled with the battery indicator. You know, there's four bars and that's not a lot of precision. And then this is, I assume the odometer and it does warn you about cruise control, which is nice. It's got a nice bag hook here. That's a great feature. I mean, everybody should do this. And this is actually also what latches the stem to the rear fender. And that one, you know, they went through all the trouble of having this actually really pretty nice latch here. Look at this. So this safety, you pull it up and twist. And now safety's off. That's great. And now you can pull this and try to do this one-handed here. It unlatches pretty easily and goes right down. This latch could really be made to latch the stem down. Why they don't do that, I just don't know. But instead they go with a plastic dealie here and it's secure, it works. You know, I can pick this up, no problem. It's nice and light, but to unlatch it is a little bit fiddly because you're flexing this fender in a way, it almost feels like it doesn't want to flex. So it's easy, but it just feels weird. You know, it's a decent looking scooter. It's kind of this deep, deep army green with sort of turquoise accents and I'm digging it. Also digging little style factors like this little downturn right here. It's pretty cool looking. Um, the design of this scooter. It's very low, the deck height is very low, which I really like. Um, and there's not much drag 
when you're pushing this thing. And so what that means, and this is especially important on a shorter range scooter, when you do run out of electricity on this, it actually makes a really decent kick scooter. You can really, like, it's fun to kick. It doesn't feel like a chore to kick this thing along. So it, you're not gonna end up doing the walk of shame. You're gonna do the kick of shame on this scooter. And it's pretty fun. And again, it doesn't feel like you're being punished. It really does on most scooters when you run out of electricity, you just feel like you're in the bad place. This is a very likable scooter. And for $3.99, you know, my expectations were pretty low, but it's definitely exceeding them. This is, it's a lot of fun for $3.99 and from, you know, a reputable brand, not some no name thing on Amazon, so. Tested performance is up next, but first, if you're interested in the G3 Plus, check out this video's description for coupon codes and links that support this channel. The G3 Plus has a tested top speed of 18.1 miles per hour, which is a huge step up from the GXL V2. Our early model GXL V2 had a measured top speed of just 13 and a half miles per hour, though we've heard the later versions were closer to the specified 15.5 miles per hour. Now, 18.1 miles per hour may not seem like a lot faster, but when you want to pass a bicycle in the bike lane, the extra speed makes a huge difference. Fully charged, I covered 9.8 miles riding the G3 Plus on our hilly range test course as fast as it would go. On flat ground, I think it would cover about 12 miles, and if you want to cover the 18 miles of range they claim on the spec sheet, you'd probably need to ride on flat ground in the lower of the two speed modes with absolutely no starts or stops. Acceleration feels really good. It's actually a little quicker than our favorite $600 scooter, the KQI2 Pro. It's also a strong hill climber, even beating our older GoTrax G4 up the steep 10% grade rider guide test hill. The brakes are easy to use. The single brake lever controls the front regen brake plus the rear disc brake and won't put you over the bars no matter how hard you squeeze. Its stopping distance just beats the GXL V2, but it outstopped the G4 by five feet since the G4 only has a rear brake. There is one area where the older GXL V2 comes out ahead and that's portability. The G3 Plus is seven and a half pounds heavier due to the beefier frame and a 16% larger battery, but it's still easy to fold and easy to carry at 35 pounds. If you're comparison shopping, here are some of our other favorite similarly priced scooters. If you value build quality over all else, New's KQI1 Pro is a great choice at this price point, but has noticeably lower performance. The KQI1 Pro's top speed is 15.5 miles per hour versus 18 for the G3 Plus, and the G3 Plus is also a much stronger hill climber. If you value performance over all else, the Highboy S2 is lighter, a little faster, and actually goes further than the G3 Plus, but has the worst ride quality because of its flat-proof semi-solid tires, despite the S2 having rear suspension. I think the G3 Plus is a better looking scooter too. And finally, the G3 Plus absolutely destroys all variants of the Swagtron Swagger 5. The G3 Plus feels like a big step up from the GXL V2, our previous favorite low-cost scooter from GoTrax. It's nice to look at, affordable, and a great choice for beginners or really anybody who's got a budget of 400 bucks. It's right in the middle between the Highboy S2 and the new KQI1 Pro with a just right balance of ride quality and performance. That said, you know, it's nothing fancy with few features and no app, but still a ton of fun, a smooth ride, and a lot of scooter for the price from one of the best known brands in the US. We've got links to all of the scooters we've mentioned in this video's description. Using them supports this channel and we'll put coupon codes down there too. As always, thanks so much to all of you who've subscribed, thanks for the likes, and I especially enjoy seeing so many familiar names each time down in the comments. I'm Paul from Rider Guide, enjoy your ride.